today we're going to be reviewing the concept of rhythms. So um, you should at this point already have this fillable um, worksheet that I had posted on MTPS Classroom. So hopefully you've already got that and you've got it saved to have your name somewhere in it. Um, we're going to be filling this out as we go along in the lesson here. And again, hopefully for everybody, this should be more of a review than it is new information. So I'm going to go kind of quick. And then if you've got any questions or you miss anything, then we can go back to that at the end. So first thing we're going to kind of fill in here, um, we talked a little bit about what is rhythm. And this is just a pretty basic definition, but rhythm is the placement of sounds in time. So that's a little vague, but I'm going to kind of show you what I mean with a um, little sample rhythmic exercise here. So this is just four measures, but right here you've got um, where the clef would normally go. Then you've got the time signature, which we'll also review in the next couple of weeks. And you've got this first measure here. And that measure um, ends, we know that measure ends because there's a bar line right after that. So that's how we know this is measure one, this is measure two, measure three, and measure four. And since measure four is the last one, there's a double bar line at the end to show you that the entire example is over. So when we say rhythm um, is the placement of sounds in time, we mean that if I am playing this little piece, and actually I'll go ahead and share my sound with you so you can hear this um, the speed. I'm gonna take this pretty slow, but um, what you're gonna hear is the metronome and the metronome is keeping the steady beat. It sounds like this. that's your steady beat. That's one, two, three, four. So that's time. That's what we're talking about. That's time. Um, we're saying that rhythm happens within time. So that's giving you beats one, two, three, and four of each measure. The rhythms happen in between that. So all that stuff is just happening in between time. And again, that's pretty vague, but we'll continue on going through some other stuff as we go along here. Um, so just kind of starting from the beginning, um, from the like mother of all rhythms, basically, um, this guy, I hope you guys remember, is your whole note. That's spelled W-H-O-L-E. And again, we'll go over time signatures a, a little bit later um, in, a, in the next couple of weeks. But for right now, just know that in 4-4 time, which is usually what we get, a whole note receives four beats. So this guy is a whole note, and for right now, he's going to receive four beats. So if we were to separate a whole note in half, um, you're just gonna kind of divide by two. So this next little ledge here is for your half notes. So I'm gonna put half, H-A-L-F, in that next blank. And we're saying that if a whole note is four beats, and it usually is, but it's not always, but if a whole note is four beats, then we're saying that if you split it in two, then you have two half notes where each half note is um, where each half note is two beats long. So we're gonna put a two also in that next little blank here. So you got these are half notes, they're two beats. You can fit two half notes into one whole note. That's similar to the concept of just like a dollar. If you have a whole dollar, you can split it into 50 cents and 50 cents. That's the same kind of concept. Um, then our next note that we're going to kind of split into, we've got um, half notes splitting into two different things, and this one's going to be your quarter note. So same kind of concept. Um, if we've got a dollar, a dollar is four quarters, right? And that's our whole note. That's a dollar. So you're going to put two quarters over here and two quarters over here if you're splitting that dollar in half. So if I have two quarters here and I split it in half, I'm going to put one quarter here and one quarter here, one quarter here, one quarter here. So that means each one of those, if I divide, because it's the half note, if I divide that by two, that means each quarter note is going to be one beat. So there shouldn't be an S there, but sorry. <laughs> so we've got whole note is four, half note is two, quarter note is one. And if we're going to keep dividing these in half, so the next note down from there, these guys are what we call an eighth note, E-I-G-H-T-H. -H. Um, and you've got over here, uh, there are four of these eighth notes, and there's two per each quarter note. These eighth notes um, look a little bit different from these, but this is still one eighth note, 
one eighth note. This is still one eighth note, one eighth note. They just happen to be um, beamed, is what we call it over here, and not beamed over here. But this is still two eighth notes, two eighth notes, two eighth notes, two eighth notes. You're looking at the um, what we call the note head. That's how you know. Uh, and your eighth note, like I said, we're going to keep just dividing by two. So if I have a quarter note, which is one beat, and then I divide one in half, I'm going to get half. So an eighth note receives half a beat. And again, there shouldn't be an S there. That's kind of confusing. Then we're going to go one more uh, step past that. So we've got one eighth note right here, and we're going to divide it in two. So we've got this eighth note here. We're going to divide that by two as well. Um, and your eighth note, if we divide it in half one last time, this is going to be a sixteenth note. And you can't really see the H, but there is an H right there. So that's going to be, yeah, there you go. S-I-X-T-E and T-H. That is your sixteenth note. If we divide a half, because an eighth note is half a beat, if we divide a half in half, we're going to get a fourth. So a sixteenth note receives one fourth of a beat. And we could talk about kind of how to actually count that. Um, but before we do that, we need to just talk real quick visually about how these guys are different. So important things, important uh, vocab words to know here. Um, your, uh, let's see, how can I actually click on this? Your um, whole note is just a circle. That circle is what we call a note head. Basically every note, unless you're a percussionist, has a note head and that's just a circle. For your whole note, it's important to know and notice that the note head is not filled in. It's empty in the middle. If we go down to your half note, um, the half note is also empty um, in the note head. It's still not filled in in the middle, but a half note looks different because it has what we call a stem. So the stem is what separates the half note from the whole note. That's how you can tell them apart. If you keep on going to the next one, your quarter note looks almost exactly like a half note because it also has a note head and a stem. The difference is going to be that the quarter note, though, is filled in in the note head and the half note is empty in the note head. If we keep on going from quarter note to eighth note, your eighth note, and I'm looking at the left side eighth notes here, um, those eighth notes look almost like a quarter note, right? Their, um, their note head is filled in and they also have a stem, but they've got one extra thing on the left side and that's called a flag. So the flag on that eighth note is gonna separate it from the quarter note. The eighth notes on the right side um, don't have a flag, but since there's two at a time, what they've got is note head, note head, stem, stem, and then they're connected by a beam, is what we call that. And if you have two eighth notes together, or if you have four eighth notes together, you can beam them together at the top, but they are still two or four or however many separate eighth notes, but they've got a beam. The last one we're gonna talk about here is the 16th note. Just like I said, the 16th notes on the left side look, again, almost exactly the same as the eighth note. The only difference is that those 16th notes have two flags instead of one. So that's what's gonna separate those individual 16th notes from those individual eighth notes. On the right side of the worksheet, um, those 16th notes, instead of having a flag, also have a beam, but they've actually got two beams, whereas the eighth notes, when they're beamed together, only have one. So you've got those four note heads all next to each other, and then you've got um, the stems of all four of those note heads, and then you've got two beams at the top. And that's how you can tell those 16th notes um, apart from those eighth notes above them. Okay? So we've got whole, half, quarter, eighth note, sixteenth. Okay? We're going to keep on going. Um, I've heard that y'all have talked a little bit about your specific way to count these notes, and we're going to try a new kind of a system here that I think will be pretty easy to pick up, especially if you already knew most or all of that information. The system we're going to use is called Takadimi. It's spelled just like that. Um, Takadimi is a system devised to teach rhythm skills. It's just a way to speak and read rhythms um, so that you can get really good at it and then you can read stuff faster than anybody else. Um, basically, we speak certain syllables for each of these types of notes that are on the page that I just showed you. When we speak a downbeat is the word that's going to go here. 
the syllable will have an ah vowel. So like the way that you say it, the syllable that's been chosen will have an ah vowel like ta or ka. That'll be a, a downbeat. And I'll kind of explain downbeat in a second. When we speak in upbeat, the syllable will have an e vowel. That's like d or me. Okay. And again, we'll talk about what downbeat and upbeat is. When we count or when we speak or count rhythms, we also this is a weird word that you may not have heard. We also patch to keep the steady beat. So I'll explain what those kinds of things mean in a second here. Um, but I'll, let me give you first what we're actually going to say for each of these rhythms so you can understand the difference between a downbeat and an upbeat. So this whole note, um, what we're going to say is ta, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, because he gets, like we just said, in 4-4 four, four time, which is what we're usually in, that whole note is going to get four beats. So if we're counting, if we're patching, and I'll show you what patching is like. It's kind of hard to see from where I am. Let me stop sharing for a moment. So patching is going to be what we do when we are uh, counting rhythms or when we're speaking rhythms. So what you're going to do is go one, two, three, four. You can do that with one hand or with two. I'll probably just stick to one now that I've shown you what to do. So all that's doing is kind of um, dividing the beats in your mind. So if you've got a whole note, um, you're going to want to count to four. So you're going to go one, two, three, four with your hands. Every time that you tap your knee, that's a downbeat. Every time your hand is up in the air, that's an upbeat. So your whole note, since you've, you're going to hold the word ta for four beats, it's going to sound like this. Ta. I know that sounds kind of silly, but that's what you're doing for the whole note. That's a very slow version of the whole note. Um, so go ahead and patch and kind of speak it with me. We're just going to speak a whole note really quickly. So all you're going to say is ta. You're going to hold it out, and then you're going to patch while we do it. Okay? Ready? Here we go. Ta. Hopefully your family is not around to hear you make these weird chorus sounds. Um, I'm going to go back to sharing that page here. Now that we've talked about that. Uh, we'll go down to the half note next. For the half note, since he gets two beats, we're going to go ta ah. That's our half note. We'll talk about dotted rhythms some other time. But same kind of thing. For your half note, you're going to patch, and you're going to hold that ta for two beats. So we're going to go ta And remember, the downbeats are what we're counting. So that's one, two. And that's how we get two beats. The one in the middle is just like, is just a subdivision. It's a divided version of that beat. So we'll talk about that. So go ahead and speak your half note with me. One, two, ready, go. Ta. That's one, two. And the next one we'll go over is the quarter notes. Since that is just one beat when we're patching, it's just going to be ta. And that's your division. That's your upbeat up here. So you do have to keep holding through that. So it's ta. Go ahead and speak that quarter note with me. One, two. Ready, go. Ta. And make sure every time that we're counting or when we're speaking rhythms, you are also patching with at least one of your hands so that you can keep that steady beat in your body. That's important. The next one we're going to put down here is your eighth note. Your eighth note, when we speak it, is going to go ta di. Actually, I'm going to separate that. I'm not going to put a dash. Ta di. So th those ones we are not holding, and we are now for the first time using a D. Remember, D means that it's on an upbeat. So that's when your hand is up here instead of on your knee. So for eighth notes, if you see those, you're going to go ta D, just like that. Go ahead and speak those two eighth notes with me. One, two, ready, go. Ta D. And that's it. Pretty simple. Just a ta D because the ta is then on the downbeat. So that's when your hand is on your knee. And then the D is then on the upbeat when your hand is in the middle of the air while you're patching. Then this last one um, is your 16th note. So we're going to use all of the title of this system for here. We're going to use ta, ka, di, mi. So for that first 16th note, that's the ta. The second 16th note is the ka. And then the third 16th note is the D. And the fourth one is the mi. So when you are speaking 16th notes, this one's a little bit more challenging because you now have to also subdivide instead of just divide. So you're going to go taka di mi, taka di mi. So you've got ta and ka down here because they're both part of the downbeat because they both have that ah vowel. Then the d and the mi are both up here because they both have the upbeat. So they both got that e vowel. 
Takadimi, Takadimi. Okay. Go ahead and try to speak some sixteenth uh, notes with me while you are patching. One and two, and ready, go. Takadimi, Takadimi, and that's it. That's all you pretty much need to know about Takadimi for the time being. It's going to get a little bit more challenging, but that's the general idea. And we're going to go uh, to a little bit of practice on sight reading factory. So stand by and make sure you've got this whole um, worksheet filled in with those answers, y'all. <laughs> 